This is Jedi General Pong Krail. I welcome you to the Voice of the Republic podcast. Listen to this podcast. That is in order. Your reputation precedes you, General. The reputation of a great new podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Voice of the Republic podcast. This is Bonnie Peace, Baru from Star Wars. Time to see who's smart enough to join the hunt. The hunt for the Voice of the Republic podcast. So, I hear we're going to be taking out Separatists on the Voice of the Republic podcast. Hello Star Wars fans across the galaxy, welcome to the Voice of the Republic podcast. My name is Daniel and joining me is fellow host Rari Williamson. Finally here. And also joining us is one of our new co-hosts, Andrew Willis. Is he... Hello. Oh, there we go, there comes the <laughs> hello. A very late hello, you had me worry there, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, I, ha- I have to have a mute and I forgot. And, oh, God. I- iPads are better than laptops. Unfor- and unfortunately, a lot of other co-hosts couldn't make it tonight. But, um, yeah, so another week, another show then. And finally, another show. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. So, I think we owe our viewers our guests already. So, if you'd like to go ahead on that. Yeah, we have Steve, a.k.a. Sifroy229, collecting a viewer on YouTube. How are you, Steve? I'm, uh, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, like I said, just waiting for you guys to get going with the show. <laughs> <laughs> we are all waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, and we also have Stephen Costantino, who played a Gamorrean guide in Return of the Jedi. How are you, Stephen? Um, hello. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, thanks. So, Daniel, it's all on you now. <laughs> it's all on me. So, <laughs> hi there, Stephen. Hello, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing great. Yeah, so my question for you is, what was your experience like being in Star Wars? My experience was a dream come true, and I um, never expected to be there in a million years, and it, it happened because of music. Uh, as I was saying, Corey D. Williams and I had a band in the 80s, and um, when his dad, Billy D. Williams, asked him to come to Yuma, Arizona, and have him stand in he said he, he wasn't going to leave me home just doing music by myself so i was invited to go and i was there for like three days and then they, they said um we're going to give you a job tomorrow and who knew i was going to be the Gamorian guard on the barge in that pivotal scene you know and um i still can't believe it to this day 30 years later huh, interesting and um that's all my questions. Thank you. And I'll hand you over to um, Rari now. Hello, Stephen. My first question for you is, how did you first get involved with Star Wars? Have you pretty much covered it. I just want to know more detail. How did I get involved? Yeah. I had a band with Corey D. Williams, and uh, he was asked to go stand in for his dad in New Arizona. I was asked to come along and play music on the set, and keep writing songs with Corey, and we brought some of our instruments, and that was incredible enough. I never expected to get any job out of it, and um, by the third day, they asked me if I'd like to be a, a Gamorrean guard on the barge, and uh, was in that great scene with um, Luke Skywalker, and um, could never imagine I'd be out signing autographs, uh, you know, 30 years later. It still amazes me to this day, and it's incredible, and the fans just embrace us and it's it's a beautiful thing to be together with Corey and Billy on the road again. Yeah, it's really cool for sure. And um, my second question for you is, had you seen a new hope and Empire Strikes Back prior to getting your role in Return of the Jedi? How did I? I'm sorry. Had you seen the first two Star Wars films before you got the role? Oh, in the absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I mean. I was living in New York City when Star Wars came out. I think I went every night on Broadway to watch it, like five nights in a row. So yeah, was... yeah, it's really cool. 
after my third question for you is, I hear you became really good friends with Corey D. Williams, son of Billy D. What was it like working with him on projects, including Star Wars? Well, it was incredible because we, we, we were making music together before, you know, we were together before that ever happened. And um, when I was asked to go with them, it was incredible. But the best thing about it is 30 years later, he lives in Atlanta now, Corey D., we're going out together doing shows, and it's like a reunion, and we both uh, look forward to our, our travels together and celebrating, you know, the whole franchise. It's pretty amazing. And he feels the same way as my, myself, Corey D. Yeah, and you, uh, you both, you and Corey did a convention a few weeks ago, am I not mistaken? Yeah, which is kind of sad. It's, it's Kansas City. And of course, I was with Richard, my dear friend, and um, we we would we actually went to the airport together and would hang out at night. And um, we had a lot in common about music and traveling. And we were talking about San Diego Comic Con and how much we look forward to it this year with the 30th anniversary. And it was um, shocking to hear that he just passed away. But I, I also feel like. Uh, I got some time with him like 11 days ago to be with him, and I felt blessed over because of that. And I'm going to cherish our time together, you know? Yeah, definitely the best thing to do. Uh, my final question for you is, will you be going to Star Wars Celebration? You have two in Germany in July, or is it too soon to say? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to. Uh, my manager, Derek, he's um trying to get Corey in there for the first time it's um interesting with disney you never know we tried last year and uh i guess our characters weren't uh big enough <laughs> but this year because of the 30th we're hoping to get you know into celebration we haven't done it yet and i i would love to and also talking about coming to the uk for a show because Corey and i haven't done any shows in the uk as well and i would love to do that because actually 80 percent of the people working on the, you know the star wars are from uk Yeah, definitely. It'd be great if you came to the UK for a show sometime. It would be really cool. So, Andrew, get, us o- get us over there. <laughs> yeah, start, definitely. Start a campaign. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> yeah, protests. Actually, my character, I don't know if you guys you must have seen pictures, but um, the rare thing is that Billy D had taken shots of us with the mask off, which is pretty rare for Lucas Films to even you know, let us have pictures like that. And that was a big plus because all the other Gamorrean guards were actually stuntmen and, and not identifiable whatsoever. So in that case, um, I became the first identifiable Gamorrean guard as far as the person in the mask, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. I actually, I actually didn't know that, actually. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Very cool piece of trivia. Thanks for sharing that. Andrew, do you have any questions for Stephen? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, now, I the, the uh, Gamorian, yeah, hey. it is a huge, huge, like kind of yeah, beast. I could say, yeah, it's a beast. Yeah, huge, yes. huge. Yeah. Now, I, yeah, what was it like wearing a suit? You know, uh, uh, on set. Well, <laughs> it, it's pretty gruesome because uh, <laughs> first of all, it's a three-part uh, costume. And when I would put the bottom half on, Corey and Billy had to hold me up because I kept uh, toppling over, you know. And uh, <laughs> and then when they would put the second half, and I'd be okay. And the mask, it was like 120 degrees in Yuma, Arizona. It's, it's the desert, and it was a dry heat, yeah. but it was hot, to say the least. Yeah. And they would, they would kind of put a blow dryer in my mouth. In those days, it was kind of <laughs> archaic in the 80s. They didn't have the technology now. So they put a blow dryer and give me some air through the mask. <laughs> and actually, oh, I have yeah. some great. If you go on my site on Facebook, there's a Jedi uh, photo album with some really uh, personal shots that we took on the set. All right. Yeah, right. I will be sure to check that out. Absolutely. Now, I think, now, uh, Steve, uh, have you got any questions? Uh, I didn't actually get time no, to just write any get down. Us to the UK. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I didn't hear you, Steve. No, so I, so I, I joined the show quite kind of late, so I didn't get a chance to write any questions down, unfortunately. So uh, you guys go ahead. <laughs> uh, so well, back to Rory. <laughs> if if I'm correct, yeah. if I'm correct, it's time for fan calls. So you know what to do, people in the chat, um, or any of our friends that are listening, of course, um, if you want to call up. Ah, uh, so. Yeah, so while we're waiting for some calls, would you like to explain a little bit what the process was like getting dressed up in the Gamorrean suit and all that, Stephen? Well, pretty much, as I said, they had a three-part suit. It was like, get into the bottom half and then, you know, kind of stay cool until they're ready to shoot a scene. And then um, they put the second half on and then the mask. And then they would kind of draw us little footsteps where I was supposed to position myself and move around when Luke Skywalker and I were fighting. And of course, to the, my demise, I um, get swallowed up by the Sarlacc pit. But uh, the, the costume was um, amazing. I mean, it's amazing the work they do and how they take just normal objects like the, the gun post and all that, are just car parts and they, they make it look, you know, the whole set, just incredible um, intuitiveness and innovation. I must say, and it's before all the DGI stuff, you know. Mm. And how long did the process take to get the whole costume on? Uh, I'd say probably um, they put some makeup on my face. I don't know why because you couldn't see my face, but um, <laughs> it was like an hour. But you know, it'd be an all-day process taking the top half off and putting it on in between shots to get their shot off, you know. Yeah. And that, now, do you guys ever come to uh, to California to the San Diego Comic Con? Any of those shows? Uh, any of you guys? I don't think me, Andrew, or Rory have of you, Stephen. Well, I did. I did San Diego Comic Con last year for um, actually General Giant sponsoring me, and this year I don't know they put a to- the original Kenner toy, which is smaller, but they took the original mold and they made it three times the size. Uh, my character, which is really nice, so I'll be there this year, kind of promoting that. Oh, that's cool. That sounds cool. And just for the record, no, I did not attend San Diego. <laughs> that took oh. a couple of seconds. <laughs> well, well, I was away we... until the good Sir Stephen had finished talking. No, I haven't attended San Diego Comic Con. Most of my four conventions so far have really been like, you know, the smaller fan shows. Like, instead of Vision Up 2, the summer will be my first big convention, so to speak. Yeah. What, what is your big show in, in UK that you guys? Well, there's one next month which is rated by the best uh, show in the UK called the Star Wars Fan Fun Day, which myself and Daniel and Steve, all of us here are going to be going to, and that's next month on May 6th. And you guys know the photos pretty well, or? Yeah, yeah, we're getting several video interviews with some of the celebrity autograph signers. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that'll well, be that, good. Derek Mackey's trying to get us there this year, so if you guys put in a good word with the promoters, that, that would help us, because I think they, they do four year. Um, I guess this four year, the one he's talking about us possibly doing later on this year. And we would love to come. So, um, anything else you'd like to ask, Rari? Yeah, actually, I have something just came to mind. Uh, how, how many conventions would you say you've been? So I thought that I've done so far. Yeah, that you've done. Um, I think last year I did about ten, and um, this year, so far I've done uh three, and I have a bunch more coming up. I'm going to North Carolina in May, May 9th, and then San Diego Comic Con is in July, and then um, Corey and Billy and I will be going out to Syracuse and also um. I think Minneapolis at some point. Yeah, that's really cool. Definitely. 
they know a lot of conventions on Twitch anyway. I love, I love, I love the whole club club. And hopefully you can, you know, get over to a celebration year or two, or even just any celebration in general from the time. I know, I would love to go to celebration. It's working out here, so. So, Daniel, any callers on your end? Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. We can still hear. I lost, I lost my screen for a minute. Oh. <laughs> I, think, back. I think that's all our questions for you then, Stephen. Thank you so much, guys, and um, it was a pleasure. And I can hear this interview on um, YouTube. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your, um, you know, having me. It was... And um, I, I look forward to meeting you guys sometime. Hopefully, we'll be yeah. in England soon. Yeah, I was glad, yeah. glad having you on tonight. And yeah, so hopefully, we will see you some point in the future at some convention. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And please come and introduce yourself. Yes, we will. <laughs> oh, we will. <laughs> I'm sure if I come to the UK, they'll. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys for sure. Yeah. And I might send you some. I'm almost finished with my CD. I might send you guys some music to play for you know. Some of my yeah, original yeah. music. I'm oh. a singer and a songwriter, guitar player. Yeah, All right. That'd be cool. And I'll, I'll send you some some songs of mine I'm working on um, via Facebook. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yes. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. Right. I think you should please say, has anyone else noticed how when Daniel says, glad to have you, oh, glad to have you on, you just sound so high and squeaky? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. My tone might... Might... Like, oh, eh, because I got a... For, for some for some bizarre reason, I just go really nervous there, and my voice just goes really high. <laughs> because you know you so should be waiting it like that. It's not that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but remember, shush, we're still live. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so next we have. We've done the interview. Wrong one. Oh, so look. Next, I think we have our autograph giveaway. Oh, I see. I managed to sneak it up the notes somehow. Yes, you managed to sneak it up the rail. So, Rowie, would you like to <laughs> go ahead for people that haven't seen our Facebook? And if you haven't seen our Facebook, then what the what are you doing here? Go and like our Facebook page now. But anyway, yes, go ahead. Well, if you haven't liked our Facebook, then yeah, sanity is not found here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, as you can gather, autograph giveaway, big whoop. New for the podcast. Big whoop new to the podcast. That's so encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a better way to put it. First of many, hopefully. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it is an autograph giveaway. Um, like Daniel, finally doing something useful. Uh, got in touch. Thank you, pardon. <laughs> doing something that I usually is under that point. So yeah, we um. Don't you laugh, Andrew. <laughs> oh. Let's be quiet, ladies. Let me finish. So, yeah, three of the autograph guests at the fan fund, they have agreed to kindly to agree to provide three autographs for this giveaway, which is really cool. I just hope they remember on the day. Don't worry, I'll make them remember. I'll, I'll screenshot the message <laughs> and prove it to them. I thought I said shush. You can. Yeah. Uh, Okay, seriously, shut. Uh, and those three um, celebrities who have agreed are uh, Jeremy Bullock, the original trilogy of Boba Fett. He also played Captain Corton in Revenge of the Sith and Lieutenant Shekel. I think I'm pronouncing that one right. In Empire Strikes Back. So, Jeremy played three characters as a regular convention guest, yeah, so this is a good one. Um, Chris Monk, who played Captain Kirby, and he's still with us so forward in the or just Star Wars to those of you who are really particular like that. Um, yeah, Kirby, really good character. 
and Chris is a very nice person. We've had him on the podcast a few times before as well, so if you've been listening to us for a while, you will have probably heard Chris on the podcast a few times. Also, yeah. And then there's also voice actor Meg Silk, who provided the voices for the characters Axio and Sil and the a grand senator and a Namoidian on the bridge, respectively. So there are definitely some good options there. Yes. Um, depending on what you like most, well, I think um, I think most people are hoping for the Jeremy Bullock one. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, apart from that guy that what you put on Facebook, but. <laughs> Well, yeah, but you never have enough. <laughs> I'm, still waiting, um, I'm still waiting for a reply from Alan Rusko. Who knows? Who knows? And I'm still waiting for you to actually shush for once. Now, let me run through the rules. I'll try to make this swift and aimless, providing people <laughs> don't interrupt. So, yeah, as you can obviously guess, it will be done in a trivia format. That's rule number one. I don't need to say anything more there to trivia format. So, rule number two. There'll be one trivia question per week. We have three more shows, including this one, before the Star Wars Fan from there on May 6th. So, you know, one this week, one next week, one the week after, blah, blah, blah. Uh, basically, it's just going to be like that, unless, as Daniel pointed out, uh, Alan Rusko gets back to us, but, you know, it doesn't really matter if he doesn't really have some good options anyway. So, yeah, definitely gonna be one this week, next week and then uh, and you know and moving on to you know real three, unless any of the celebrities uh, don't care otherwise it's not up to us what picture you get so I'm just putting it out there, you know you, you can't just go on Google images which is children or you can't just go there and say, I want this picture signed because <laughs> you know the celebrities will have select ones on their table. Or you'll be disqualified. We're not that harsh. I guess so. And like I said, and I thought you would agree not to interrupt while I was reading the rules. Now, where was I? Yon. Dun dun yeah. dun. Okay, seriously. Uh, we already <laughs> know that Chris Monk has a specific sign picture he'll give us for the, you know, giveaway, so there's no choice where Chris is concerned. But that's okay, because, I mean, he's agreed to provide one with him and George Lucas. I mean, that's just really. A great image. Well, any image with the data of this great franchise, you know, is. You know, Max Silk has, like, said um, we could take any image, any picture of these two characters. He has on any, <laughs> any picture at all, not, no matter which character, you know, that he voiced. So, yeah, as for Jeremy, we don't know yet. So, and, you know, since the most basic rule, but I have to point out anyway, is, like, we picked um, the guests, you know, based on who we thought would be the most likely to, and our prediction was right, I think, so, you know, we're not going to take into consideration if anyone's like, why couldn't you get this person to provide an autograph, or why don't we ask this person, you know, we picked three very nice people, who we expect, who we did think would agree, and you know, they did. I mean, it's a simple ass thing. Now, of course, I've met Jeremy Bullock a few times, really nice man, and so I'm not surprised he agreed. And, you know, I've chatted to Chris and Meg several times, and they've also seemed very nice, so and I just love their fans and do anything to show it. And, you know, uh, Daniel has every right to interrupt me on this one. You know, I know he loves this rule because all trivia answers must be sent to myself, not him. And yes, they will, you will be disqualified if that happens. Uh, am I evil or what? No. It's getting, um, you know, basically, I pick the questions, so I get the answer. It's simple as. But, yeah, you can send me them in any way you like. Facebook message, if you have me added on Facebook. Um, Skype message, if you have me added there. But probably the easiest way, for those who don't have me added on either of is my email which I have which I have posted in Daniel, the live chat. Yep. Daniel is kind of post in the live chat, which is Rory Williamson at hotmail.com. So, get so your... hopefully I'll get so hopefully I'll get a lot of emails in a few minutes. I was, I was about to say get your answer in, but we haven't even revealed the question. 
Obviously. Yes, and I, just, will then have a bunch of names of those who do get the answers right and sent it in to me. Uh, do a shuffle on video, uh, call the name, uh, wherever we shuffle in. Every and, day uh, I'm shuffling. No, just not. And the name on that uh, piece of paper wins the autograph, basically. Uh, of course, like this is the most important reason, uh, the drill number six. Um, the reason we're doing these before the event is each autograph will be dedicated personalized with the winner's name on it. So if you don't want a dedicated or a personalized autograph, don't enter. Yeah, um, it's pointless if not, just go to eBay. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, autograph guests at conventions, you know, prefer to dedicate autographs purely for that reason, as Daniel Freeman said, you know. It's like, slowly guests always have that, you no know, concern that people are just get their autographs or sell for even huger money on eBay or websites like that, so they always prefer to dedicate them. Let's face it, dedicated autographs aren't really useful to anyone else, and that's, well, you know, a common name. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, well, maybe, like, I put an autograph dedicated to me on eBay and somebody called Daniel comes along and buys it from me. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm very safe in saying that there's no one else who shares my, you know, weirdly spelled fantastic first name. <laughs> not not a lot of Rory's. <laughs> yeah, not in that spelling anyway, but um, rule number seven, again, one of the most important, but very simple. If you win this week's trivia question, you have a choice between any of the three. Here are servies who have agreed to provide autograph this giveaway, Jeremy Bullock, Chris Monk, or Meg Silk, you can pick any of those three. Um, and then we make a note on who won that one. Second week, it's a choice between the two left over. Um, so, yeah, and then third week, the winner of that one basically gets whichever one is left, so... Don't be disappointed. Yeah, at least you won something. Um, and now, anyway, next draw... I'll just cover again for you, for those who have short term memory and can't remember. Oh no, was, um, it was torture enough. Just shut up. Jeremy Bullock, Boba Fett, Captain Fulton, and Lieutenant Shekel, Chris Monk, Captain Piggy, and Meg Silk, voice of Axmo, and Star Lunch. So, yeah, I mean, those are the three. Um, and uh, just going back to what I said before, in case you forgot, Facebook message me. Or Williamson, Skype message me, Roy Williamson, uh, email me, Roy Williamson at hotmail.com, any of those three, any of those three will do, you know, they'll be counted, like you could even YouTube message me, send me this destroyers, but I don't think any of you will, <laughs> so, nope, yeah, all nope, I can there'll be say, one, the all one person that'll do it. Are you going to let me ask the question? No. Good. So, all I can really say is get your geek on, so I'll just give you all a few seconds to get ready to type your answers. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, move, getting on to it, and this is where everyone must be absolutely quiet because this is the most critical moment. So, in, in The Empire Strikes Back, Boba Fett has a famous line, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. However, the original actor Jeremy Bullock said this line wrong when he was on set, but you don't hear this version of what Jeremy actually said as Jeremy's voice was overdubbed for Boba Fett. What was it that Jeremy actually said by accident when he was recording the scene? So get your geek on. On your marks, get set, go. On <laughs> your marks. Set go is when I read it out. I wonder how many people will be on Google. <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah. for those of you wondering, this I actually discovered this dance this question at a convention, so it's very right fitting if you think. You know, Fan Fun Day autograph giveaway, Fan Fun Day is a convention. Yeah. Jeremy Bullock's going to be a guest there. It's awfully fitting, you know. You know. I actually, before yeah, before the, I decide on this, I was actually thinking, right, just to be completely bad, I'm going to make them as hard as I can possibly do. So, <laughs> or get with these yeah. questions. Now, now I have to keep them related to the fan fun day. So I was like, 
yeah, that one. That, that's a perfect one for a first question. And all, all, that, all that I can say is get your geek geek on and hopefully you'll be in that hat soon. And just to clarify as well, if you're only this if you're listening to the YouTube version afterwards, you are permitted to, you know, leave your answer there as well. And how just for the viewers to be clear, how many days have they got until the answer expires in some way? I'd say they expire every time, you know, trivia. It's the time for the next trivia. So, so, so they've got till next Friday. Yeah, but on the third and last one, we'd have to, like, make the deadline pretty quick, you know. Oh, yeah. It's before that. True, yeah. Well, it would, ha it would genuinely have to be either, the like, the Sunday morning or... Well, it'd have to be the Sunday yeah, morning. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say Sunday morning. Because we leave Sunday Or... Or Saturday evening. No, yeah, that's because, that's because I'm, I'm staying at yours as well. Well, yeah, you're um, you're staying over so. at mine, but that's another story. No need to tell the viewers that you're staying around at my house. Yeah, the one yeah. thing, yeah, the one thing, <laughs> one thing we haven't really actually decided though is who's doing the shuffling. If, well, it will go straight to the Voice of the Republic podcast, uh, YouTube. Yeah, but I mean the video. That's what I meant. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. How are we going to draw a winner on video? We'll, 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 we'll talk about this later. What's wrong? Oh, uh, and Rory, uh, what kind of hat are you using? Oh. That's why I'd like to know. Oh, wait. Is it a flat cap? Who's using the hat? Is it a top hat? Is it a woolly hat? Well, Is it a baseball cap? You know what? I'm going to go through my wardrobe <laughs> after this podcast and look out every single damn hat I've got and then decide which one I want. Yeah, and see which ones will fit paper in it. Most of them, to be honest. Farmer's hat. Well, I, you know hat. I, could, I could use my chef hat. <laughs> no. Yeah. What? Oh, <laughs> anyway, I think we should move. We should move along to keep. So, our next topic is obviously this. Well, this, not really discussing, but talking about the sad news of. The passing away of Richard Le Parmentier, who played Admiral Motte in Star Wars. So. Yeah, but right. now when I first heard it, I was I was kind of shocked. You know, what I mean, I was very shocked. I, I was gobsmacked. You know, when I when I heard this, you know, it's, you know, he played like quite an important role, obviously, in like. Uh, Oh, I can't think of what it's called hey, now. Which one? Hope. New Hope, that's the one. <laughs> oh, my brain's a split blank. And oh, no. in his name of his Star Wars movies, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, found, I found out <laughs> Rari when I got back from college, and I'm just like, no, seriously, dude, don't play jokes like this. <laughs> and I'm like, it's too late. <laughs> like, it's such a gravest voice I could put on. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think what we really have to say though is, you know, you know, we've read about you know Star Wars celebrities passing away before, and it's always a sad thing every time. But the thing that really gets us this time is, you know, most of those who have passed away before, you know, they did a few conventions, but they weren't really, you know, they didn't really connect with people in the community. You know, they weren't coming on yeah. these podcasts and stuff like that. Now, Richard was one of those who passed away, and the first I know who passed away, who actually was one of those who connected with the community, who, like, you know, would do podcasts regularly, even came on to an interview and had podcasts, so I think that's the most shocking thing about it, really. Yeah, definitely. He, he's, he sounded a good guy when we interviewed him. Yeah, he definitely was, and, like, we were going to be busy well, yeah. interviewing him. That's that's kind that, that's kind of what saddened the moment a bit more. You're finally going to meet him. Yeah, and then. Uh, and then. Yeah. I mean, and like we're not cool. like we're not the only ones who are going to meet him, and then then like there was. Yeah, of course. Me and then Steve. I think we well, yeah. met him. Either. Had you met him before, Steve? No, I never got the chance, unfortunately. Um, 
obviously the fan fun day coming up next month would have been my first time meeting him and uh, I was really looking forward to it but uh, yeah. obviously with his untimely passing it's it's never going to happen now so it's yeah like you uh, like you said it's a real shame real shame and a massive shock as well when I, when I heard the news so yeah. Yeah, then, I think like, it's a good idea sorry Karen. and then thanks Richard like well from the autograph collection like he could have met Richard last year but it was at the fan fun day when Richard was at a show in yeah. this city mm. that he resides in. So, yeah. uh, I, th- I think it's good as well that um, Fan Fun they have kept not bringing in a replacement actor and like dedicating the show to Richard, kind of, as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, I right. think that's mainly down on me. I spam Neil for ages saying, "Do <laughs> not get another guest. Do not replace." The, 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 I think yeah, it's it's, it's, it's Go ahead, Steve. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say it's really good as well because the, obviously the night before at the, the Dinner with the Stars event, um, just prior to the Fan Fun Day, there actually, obviously, Richard would have been attending that as well. And, and Neil said that obviously, you know, because he, he's not getting replaced with another with another guest at the event, so there's actually going to be an empty seat for him at the dinner as well. Um, and I'll yeah. be attending that. So obviously, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a, a massive round of applause for Richard at, at the dinner and what have you. So. I think it'll be it'll be a really nice fitting tribute to Richard um, next month, so I'm really looking forward to that. Definitely. Yeah. And the the, the, the big um, condolences as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I was uh, to, to, to touch on that. You know, it's it's a brilliant idea. You know, for us, us kind of make our last, you know, kind of yeah. thing for him. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, wish him off. You know. Yeah, yeah, Plus the book. Yeah, yeah, I believe the I believe the book getting passed <laughs> yeah, on the, to the family as well. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah it's the book that we, the book they're gonna put on what would have been Richard's table at the event as well. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. The the only thing will be like it will. Not, not that it's thing me, but it'll probably be impossible like for a minute, minute of silence or somebody with so many kids there. Yeah, exactly. That's probably what they'll try and do. With. The, the stars, you know, that yeah. Season, and, you know, what about a uh, the Imperial March or something? <laughs> yeah, I think someone actually mentioned that. Yeah, something like Imperial March and clapping for a minute or something like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, Andrew, all you have to do is ask your mum to call you at a particular <laughs> time. There's the Imperial March, basically. <laughs> I, I play my phone, yeah, just put it on full, like, full volume and just blast it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I think maybe we should listen to a segment of one of the well, uh, one of the segments the, in the, um, the interview of what we did with Richard. Um, so we'll play the first bit. Is it true you originally auditioned for the role of Han Solo? Um, no. Well, yes and no. I um, I I was one of the only actors that came on in the UK that was auditioned in Los Angeles. And all the actors that went in that week, probably about 1,500 of us, everyone read the hand Greedo scene in front of George Lucas and Francis Ford Coppola and John Milius and Brian De Palma and Steven Spielberg. So a young casting assistant read Greedo in English, of course, and we did, all the other male actors did hand. Uh, so I didn't audition for the part, that was the reading that was given to us on the set. Yeah, so that that was actually quite interesting when I heard that on the podcast, when we did the interview yeah. with Richard. Yeah, definitely. Like, I didn't even know until that day I actually asked, you know. Like, yeah, what? yeah, it's just Happy kind of like, like, so many Han Solo editions. <laughs> yeah, 15,000, no less. <laughs> that, that, that's a lot of parsecs to cover. Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember, like, another segment, um, we did, uh, well, he, he, he mentioned it was kind of funny, um, well, I'll let you guys listen to it. It was like, um, they have announced one guest for, um, for a celebration of two events, so it was announced that only in the last couple of days, even, so... Oh, yeah, Dave, yeah. Yeah, Dave Filoni, yeah. 
cool. Yeah, I know. I would love to meet Dave Filoni. I would like. I'd love to do a voice in Clone Wars. Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> oh, I know. I'd love to do. It. I would love to do a voice in, and uh, and uh, in Clone Wars. It'd be it'd be great fun. Yeah, it was it was fun. Can I, yeah. Can I go and be the best now? Clone Wars is dead. Richard is dead. Everything's turning on me. Ah, everything's turning on us, unfortunately. But that, that that was just so fun to hear, like the yeah. fact that he said. And he, that, yeah, that and that was when Clone Wars wasn't even cancelled. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. It's like rock. It's like rotten fortune if you think about it. Yeah, who else wouldn't have loved to see like a young Admiral Morty in the Clone Wars? Yeah, I would. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted to see all the Imperial officers in the Clone Wars. Really, I mean, they could have added so much. Yeah, definitely. Like, I actually, I actually discovered recently Captain Nida, who was in uh, Steve. Steve, you're the original trilogy expert. Which one was Nida in? Nida is the guy in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, that's the one. Mm. He's just making sure. Like, apparently, <laughs> he had a... He was a pretty important character, you know, even before the Imperial Times, like, during the Clone Wars. Like, apparently, like, like was talking to Grievous at some point, or and Yoda as well. Like, he was kind of a two-way, you know, officer, I guess you could say. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's funny you say that, because like, do, yeah. do any of you guys read the Clone Wars comics? I've read Some a of them, yeah. Because, um, speaking of the, the Imperial officers and what have you, Admiral Ozzel... Oh, uh, oh yeah, actually, Ozzel. Yeah, he appears in one of the Clone Wars comics, leading a, a mission to one of the uh, the snow planets. I forget the name off the top of my head, oh, but he leads it, one of the missions uh, with Kit Fisto and Plo Koon, which is pretty the cool. Planet, the planet was Corum, and I remember that comic very well. It's mm. the one that Commando Wall loses yeah. that half of his. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Ventress. Revenge will be wolves. <laughs> yeah, uh, ma- a massive wolf fan you are. We all know. Well, then again, it's nothing really new, is it? <laughs> Why you it up. <laughs> and the, the, the yeah, yeah, and also was just as cowardly in that comic, wasn't he, Steve? Mm. <laughs> and the last, um, well, the last segment that we took from the video was kind of cut short, just because if we'd played the whole interview, it could have gone on for three or four minutes. So if you wanna, if you don't wanna listen yeah, to the, play, just play. yeah, just play, play the last bit. Yeah, I have to ask you about the Xbox commercial, uh, Richard. Ah. How was that experience? Getting to sit back and laugh as the other Imperials get choked out this time. It was the weirdest. The whole it, all, it took about two, three weeks to all come together from the time that they had asked me to do it. Uh, because I went to my and I was looking for an actor for another lookalike. But, and I think they were looking for a lookalike for me, but then they were also looking for Clint Howard. And uh, and my agent said, no, but I handle Richard. You have to have him in the commercial. And they said, oh, well, is where is he? And they said, well, he's in Texas. You know, we'll, you know, so we'll let's get him. So this whole thing went for two, two and a half weeks. And like one day I was doing the commercial. The next day I wasn't doing the commercial. So the whole thing became a bit of a, you know, a saga in itself. And I, I sent off my measurements to have a uniform made because up until two days before, well, really about 36 hours before, I didn't know whether I was going to be doing it or not. Uh, and then I just got a call on a, on a Tuesday morning that I was on a flight at first thing on Wednesday morning to L.A. at 6 o'clock and going right to the studio and shooting and then they were going to put me up in a hotel and fly me back because I had to be back in Austin. Uh, <laughs> so when I got on the set, it was um, but before I went on to meet everyone. I talked. I said to the director, I said, "Why did this take so long? What was going on?" Because you know we'd asked for a lot of money, which they gladly paid. But I said, they said it wasn't the money. He said, "No, no, they had to go to they had to go to you know to the ranch to get the the sign off." They had to go to George before we could do it. Because uh, no, no Star Wars actors ever done a commercial for a Star Wars product. I mean, that, 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 that was a funny commercial. 
Yeah, it's just so weird, you know, just listening to those segments and realising that, you know, he's no longer with us. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a big loss and, well, he'll, he's one with the force now, as they say. Yeah, we didn't expect yes. it coming up to the Well, no, that's, uh, the, yeah, just a big shock to, well, most of us. All of us. All of us, probably. But, yeah. Mm. Oh, all that I can see. So like, yeah. Ow. So, yeah, we're like, what kind of tributes is like, you know, everyone gonna be paying to Richard at Fan Fun Day? Yeah, you know, gonna be like doing anything for particular or? Well, definitely, you know, they'll definitely be you know, signing the. Yeah, definitely. Know, yeah. Now, yeah, we're probably at the dinner and night before they'll have that minute signed. There's no way that I'll get a minute signed from them. Yeah, Red. I meant kind of like personal, like you guys as well. You know, Red. What are you uh, guys personally going to do to, to, you know, to, to tribute him? And that. Daniel, any ideas? We'll, we'll come up with something for. Uh, well, uh, I'm getting a T-shirt printed. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned that. Yeah, and that, you know, Red, yeah, Red, I'll get it done. In the next few days, and I put it on the uh, Voice of Spirit podcast Facebook um, thing. I yeah. will, and obviously, yeah. So yeah. That I'm showing my tribute to him, and obviously, yeah. Look for me. <laughs> but yeah, for yeah, look for Andrew commenting a bit more on our Facebook page. Look, yeah, look, look, look at Andrew. Oh no, wait, he'll be the guy behind the camera. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Oh, Ben. I'm sorry, I had to say that. But <laughs> all, all that I've got oh. left to say of this topic is rest in peace, Richard. Yeah. So, moving on to... He's with the stars now. Yes, moving on to our next topic from tonight is obviously one that all of us will like here, Fan Fun Day. Mm-hmm. So... About to, Steve, about to Steve you've been there before. <laughs> Any experiences you'd like to share? Oh, man, where do I start? <laughs> Um, uh, go into a lot of detail. We've got a long time. <laughs> um, well, the first fan fun day that I attended was um, the year before last, which was uh, 2011. Um, and that day, really, was that was my first Star Wars convention, actually. Um, I'd never been to anything like that before. Um, and it was fantastic. You know, I mean, that time around, I was attending it more as a fan. Um, just, you know, walking around the room taking it all in, having a look at the costumes, the stalls, spending too much money, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, I actually met uh, Alan Harris, um, Chris Parsons and Chris Monk um, at that event. Uh, and they were all absolutely fantastic. And I was I was stood for a good, I mean, it must have been about half an hour, stood talking with Alan Harris. Um, he's, he, he was a really good... Alan, Alan played Bosk um, in and Empire Strikes Back. Roles. Yeah, loads of roles. He, he actually told me um, when when I met him that he was the, not the stunt double as such, because there weren't many stunts involved because it was a static piece, but he was the, the cast for the body of the carbonite block um, that you see Han Solo getting cased in, in in The Empire Strikes Back. So obviously you had Harrison Ford's face on that, um, but he was actually the body of it, which was pretty cool. And uh, he, he was, of course, I mean, a lot of pictures have been surfacing online over the past few weeks. Uh, Alan was also the uh, the guy who tested the suit for Boba Fett before it all went into the final stages of production. Yeah, uh, yeah the white one. The photo yeah, photo. yeah, yeah. So that was really cool. He had a lot of stories to tell. And then, obviously, uh, that time was my first time meeting Chris Monk as well. And he was an absolute, he was a... Crazy as you know, crazy as anything, but absolutely fantastic. Really genuine, friendly guy. Um, took the time out to speak to us and what have you. Actually, I was walking up and down the room, and he shouted from his table, "Hey, Sith Lord two two nine, what are you doing here?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> and I was like, I, I, had, "I had to look around because I thought I was hearing things." And I was like, "What? what are you, are you just, yeah, I watch your videos. They're really good." And I was like, "Wow, <laughs> that's cool." <laughs> Well. So obviously, like, <laughs> with that being my, my first sort of Star Wars Pretty convention. Awesome, guys. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. Um, yeah, right. This... Sorry, go ahead. Oh wait, 
I, I, I have been warned by Dan and Rory about Chris, like, like you know, not to run away from him. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do not run away from him. He will he's, not get away. He, we just warned him, because Chris said last time he was on the podcast that when we see him, we have to go up and he'll get, like, give a handshake and a big hug and... Andrew kind of heard that and got scared. We're like, don't run away from him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, he's a fantastic guy. He's really, really nice, really friendly. Um, he actually um, gave me an autograph for free last year. So, you know, cross your fingers and play your cards right and you might get the same fortune. But, <laughs> oh, nice. um, but yeah, re- really nice, really nice guy, really nice guy. And then, obviously, last year at the Fan Fun Day was the, uh, the time when I actually held a table of my own. Uh, at the event and there's pictures up on Facebook and what have you I can send you guys the links if you want to put these in the, the descriptions or what have you um, and we actually held a raffle uh, a charity raffle um, which you guys will have probably seen the picture we, my, yeah. my dad's in the prop builder that he is um, went to work on a, on a custom clone trooper helmet and we managed to get the display stand signed um, by all the actors um who were at last year's Fan Fun Day, so it was like David Prowse, um, who else was there last year? Uh, Paul Blake, could, who I played could, Grita. I'd, yeah, I'd probably have the saddest life ever if I could name them all off. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, refresh okay, my memory. Yeah, it wants me to actually try and name them all off, and I didn't even attend the Do event. it, do it. <laughs> okay, Dave Prowse, Paul Blake, Anthony Ferris, Ian Liston, Stephanie English, Derek Lyons, Barry Holland, there's two more. Kenny <laughs> Baker wasn't on the list, so I'm not counting him. Um, but he was there. <laughs> I know, he wasn't. Uh, Garrick Hagen, he was there as well. Now, mm-hmm. come on, there's one more. Like, two more. Come on, I'm joking. Because I've got everyone on the top half of the list. Uh, Derek Lyons. Yeah, I named him. Derek, Stephanie, and uh, Barry on the bottom half. Was there four or five people on the bottom half? I'm just getting me. Um, oh. Think back to the pictures. Think back to the pictures. <laughs> uh, so. It's probably worse than I'm having. Ian Liston? I just named him already. Same. same uh, Anthony Forrest. Simon! Simon, oh. Simon Williamson. Williamson. <laughs> That's the one that's for really Abel. And another of the Gamorian guys, actually. Mm. I knew I was forgetting someone I'd been in contact with before. Why is it always those I've talked to? And it's the one with your surname as well. <laughs> That's the worst thing. I <laughs> <laughs> had to point that out. <laughs> I don't know, that, that actually just makes me embarrassed. <laughs> so, Steve, what, what autographs are you planning to get this year? Um... Jeremy Bullock's for sure. Um, he's probably the one that I want to get the most. Um, I actually met Jeremy uh, about four or five years ago um, while I was on my holiday, surprisingly. Uh, we, but we, we had a walk into a small town in Devon and um, we found this sci-fi charity shop. Uh, not a charity shop, what am I talking about? A sci-fi collector's shop. Uh, <gasps> and, we walked, and we walked in there and, um, and Jeremy was actually sat down signing autographs, which was a bit of a shock. Um, so, oh, wow. yeah, I had, had the chance to meet him there, but he was um, really, really busy. The shop was really small as well. It was like it was funny because it was a, a store that primarily sold Doctor Who uh, merchandise. Weird. But the shop was nothing like a TARDIS because it looked massive from the outside, but as soon as you got in, it was like sitting in a wardrobe. <laughs> uh, so it, it really wasn't much fun. So as much as I'd have loved to have waited and got his autograph and everything, there was no way I was going to. Plus, we were on our way home at the time as well, so I didn't have the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Jeremy Bullock yeah. for definite. Um, Julian Glover as well, who played General Veers uh, in Empire Strikes Back. Um, hoping to get two of him, two of his autographs, because um, I'd like to get an image of General Veers signed, and as well as a, an image of the character he played in Indiana Jones as well. Um, yeah, which I'll watch like, Donovan, isn't yeah. It? yeah, I'll mm. watch Indiana Jones. Leave and I know that. Am I a geek or what? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah. Actually, it's actually funny, Steve, that going back to what you were saying about Jeremy being at, you know, that collector's shop signing autographs, like, that's like it was for me with my uh, first celebrity, you know, sightings, you know, from Star Wars in person. Like, there was Star Wars in concert, have you heard of that? 
Mm. Yeah, I, I attended that. I went to that here uh, in my hometown. So, yeah. Yeah, it, like I was at the one in Dublin in 2010. I was just like, oh, they go play theme from the Star Wars universe. That's cool. And then, like, I went inside. There were costume characters. There were props. There were displays. I was like, well, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> this is going to be fun because it's the first time I'm going to meet celebrities in person. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that was even the most shocking thing. Like, we went, like, because I went there with my mum. She told me about, like, just one or two days beforehand. It's like, it was very late planning to go to it. Um, and then we went inside and sat down. And then, you know, they were just, they were just, like, getting ready to start it. And then the present or whatever, like the main person behind the orchestra was just like, and now we'd like to bring in a very special guest before we mm -hmm. start. I know uh, it's like, oh, there's going to be some random guy I don't know about. Because, see, this was actually very far back. This was even before I knew anyone in the community. No joke. Like, I was even in the Star Wars community when I went to this event. And, and like, I was just like, there's going to be some, you know, head of band, something that I don't know about. And then Anthony Daniels walked on stage, and I was like, I am a think I almost shouted, holy fuck! <laughs> yeah. Something like that. And yeah, I <laughs> do have my limits. <laughs> Yeah, I did hold it in, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious yeah. to see, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, you know, this was even before I knew that he was actually a, you know, diva, really, so... No, that's <laughs> what really shocked me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but Steve... Yeah, and even... Uh, yeah, and even oh. Sorry, Andrew, but even when uh, I... Went, like, sorry, that's right, sorry, carry on. Even when I went to my first convention, like, I didn't even know what convention was. I just knew it was this experience. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know it even have actors, you know, actually attending. Back, back, back in the younger days. <laughs> I know, right? How much changed in two and three years, respectively. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Andrew, you were saying. Yeah, um, uh, Steve, um, mm -hmm. Do I like it? When, like, you know, a fan fun day comes around, you know, um, yep. it will be the first time, you know, um, that actually me, Dan, and Rory will be meeting. Well, obviously, me and Dan are best mates already. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I thought you met me many times. God, what Andrew have I been meeting for the last year? <laughs> you, you know what I mean. No, uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, the three of you in the It'll same room. It'll be the first room. time yeah. that, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that that'll three be, of us be the same That'll be awkward, the three of us in the same room. <laughs> yeah, I'll just well. be like, what are you doing in my hotel room? Out, out. That's a wrong key. You get the idea. Yeah, just like, wrong <laughs> key, whoops. <laughs> Daniel, weren't you like saying to me before that you were going to knock on every door in the trap? <laughs> I was saying, <laughs> right, if, <laughs> if, if, if they weren't going to tell me at reception where you, what room you are, I was just going to go door to door. Rari? 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 <laughs> me? I, actually, I should do it three times. I'll be times. hiding I should, in the hotel room. I should do it three times, just like a big, the whole, big bang. The whole hotel theory. traces it. Rari? 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 <laughs> Come on, there's one time around the whole travel, I was not bad enough. <laughs> uh, that, that'll, oh, that'll, that'll, that'll stay at the travel lodge? Yeah, we're staying at the travel yeah. lodge. Oh, you bump into me then. <laughs> oh, well. we're, we're staying in there the night before, because uh, obviously we're attending the dinner and what have you. There, oh, yeah. uh, that's where that's where we're staying. Yeah. I, I don't so, think. Well, we don't yeah. arrive till seven, so you're safe. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I, 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 don't arrive, uh, <laughs> I think I'm arriving at like five or something. That's great. That means I have two hours to hide somewhere so that Daniel can't find oh, me. Oh sweet! So if you arrive at five, that way I can ask what room you're in. <laughs> Oh no, I might be outside. I'll find you. <laughs> well, I'll find you. Uh, we'll, we'll, no, I'll kill you. We'll, we'll be on social, but we'll go to the room and we won't see until the entrance for Fan Fun Day the next day. <laughs> anyway, Aww, Steve, no, didn't you interfere, did you Andrew? Did you Aww. actually get any pictures of you meeting, you know, Chris Harrison, Alan Harrison, and Chris Long? Sorry, just repeat that, I missed that. 
did you ever get any pictures taken of you meeting those three from the 2011 fan from the person's Harrison Hunt? Um, I didn't get pictures with them. Um, I, I got pictures of them, but not yeah, with them. I um, no, I, I, I took a few pictures at the event, and uh, I obviously bought... Uh, I took well, I took a couple of pictures of my own actually to go and get signed. Um, so I did that, but I didn't get any actual pictures just taken with them. No. We 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 won't be hard to find at Fan yeah. Fun. They just look for the three people that have got like lots of equipment on them. <laughs> yeah, being weighed down by all this. Yeah. You know what? Hey. When we're actually video interviewing, we'll only need the microphone so Andrew can get the rest of the equipment. <laughs> Yeah, just like, Andrew, you're in charge of the the uh, MacBook that we're being lent, and you're responsible for it while you're holding it. <laughs> yeah. No and pressure you on you. It, and if you drop it, well, you'll have to pay the guy who lent us it. <laughs> no pressure on you, Andrew. No pressure. I'm sure Paul... No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good pressure, sorry I'm, about I'm, it. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure Paul Dunn won't be angry with you. But, uh, so like yes. uh, we're not videoing anymore then. We're not, oh my we're not god! Going video. Sorry, <laughs> so, uh, sorry. It's my language. Yes, we're. Uh, you know what? I'm going to explain this to you after the podcast. I cannot be bothered to go through with this right now. Dude, it's it, no. it's been a long day. I'm still kind of suffering from the flu. Leave me alone. We don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, where's see? the beta boys? Go, go and eat your organs. Oh, this is how I co-host and, treat you. Oh, oh. Anyway, Steve, what are you most looking forward to aside from meeting Jeremy and Julian this year? Um, just the entire event, really. Um, as you guys will probably know, we're holding another table this year. Um, so I'm hoping you're going to come along and buy a raffle ticket. Yes. Uh, I'll yes. come along. I'm not oh. so sure about the raffle. I'll, I'll come and buy a raffle ticket. I'll be the nice one from here. <laughs> good man good man um but yeah the entire experience really i could just uh you know obviously um after last year there's a, f- a lot more people going that i'm familiar with now and that i know and talk to regularly online um looking forward to meeting frank again um from star wars autograph collection um we w- i was sat at his table for the dinner last year and he interviewed me at the fan fund day as well um and yeah, just meeting meeting new people, meeting you guys obviously as well, and uh, having a few people come up and say hello, and just enjoy the day. Really, I'm just looking forward to it all. I'm counting down the days. And those, <laughs> so others, so you know, looking for those uh, others looking for free autographs as well. Seventeen days to go. Yeah. Is that it? Wow. Yes. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I like. Well, so fast. Whenever that, that Daniel is. tells me how long it is, I'm like. Uh, I haven't done my video interview questions. I need to do that now. Then another day goes. Every every time I tell Rari how many days are left, you're like, you're really counting. (laughs) I've not said that, have I? You did. You said that. Maybe one. I'm I'm counting. Yes, but that's you, Andrew. I'm very excited. (laughs) Yeah. Andrew, you just like to show that you're good at maths. You want to prove that and run on that. (laughs) <laughs> well, it, yeah, but it's anyway. okay. Cause I'm I'm totally unorganised for it this year. I mean, I haven't even got my T-shirts printed yet. I'm still waiting for the prizes to arrive from Jedi News for the raffle, and yeah, at least I'm you've all got over the, the place. At least you've got the Survive Your Best logo done, though. Yeah, well, that was that uh, was epic. That was yeah. sorry. The logo yeah. looks epic. Just pointing that out. Yeah, really good, man. Really good. Part of part of it is um, thanks to Mr. Corellian over on YouTube. He actually creates the uh, the illustrations for me of the characters, and then obviously I put my uh, expertise into use by creating the logo behind it. So it's a, a team effort on that front. Yeah, that's good. Thing. Yeah. And I know what I'm looking forward to this year. Not meeting us, obviously. <laughs> Gee. Why is that? <laughs> I'm kidding. You, 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 don't, you don't want to meet me because of my squeaky voice. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you do it like that. God. <laughs> Run away. It's like one... It's, it didn't it's actually, like one of, <laughs> it didn't actually like mean one, that voice. It's like one of squeaky, do, you know, squeaky toys dogs bite and it just goes... <laughs> 
I did not actually mean to do that voice. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. So our next. I'm plugging in my uh, MP3. You have to interrupt. On, on way out. You have to interrupt. Them. All right. <laughs> Go and sit in the corner and eat your Oreos for once in a while. Um. So our okay. next topic is new Disney news, including the annual Star Wars movie starting 2015 and interchanging between sequel trilogy and character films. Now. I don't know how to hand this over to you, so I'm just going to eeny, meeny, miny, I'll just go for it, Rari. Because you always do. Yeah. Well, okay then. And, oh, oh. and because you want a Rari's rant, that's it. No, because uh, yeah. I think the, I'm not happy wants with it. I think the public wants a Rari's rant by now. <laughs> yeah, they all do. <laughs> and they know they'll oh. get it. You know, <laughs> and somebody in the chat just mentioned Dan Squeaky Voice. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah, coming, you've sold yourself out on that And one. a girl in the chat just put that squeaky voice scared me. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so Steve, you're up. What's your take on Disney's, you know, annual Star Wars movies thing? Um, I'm all for it, you know. Um, every, a lot of people I've spoken to have sort of slated the idea, um, but I'm really looking forward to it. Everybody thinks that it's kind of, it's they're going to, it's just going to be overkill doing it yearly, um, but I think it's great. You know, as long as the films are good, um, they're original, yeah, it really, and it really depends on how the scripts are handled. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as long as long as the films are good, um, then I'm all for it. You know, if they're if I'm not if they're terrible films and they're still coming out annually, then I'm not going to be looking forward to it, obviously. But if they are good films, I don't see the problem. Most Star Wars is is good for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if it's it doesn't matter if it's good graphics. The story, the story base is what kind of important uh, is important as well. If it's a really bad story <laughs> base, then I don't <laughs> think a lot of people. people <laughs> oh. uh, I'm kidding. I'm no prequel hater. If there'd been no prequel trilogy, there would have been no wolf. <laughs> but wolves from the Clone Wars. What? How yes. That yes, because the pre prequel trilogy involves the Clone Wars in between Attack of the Clones Revenge of the Sith there'd, there'd be no Revenge of the Sith no Attack of the Clones there would be no Clones if there are no Clones there would be no Clone Wars if there'd be no Clone Wars there would be no Commander Wolf yeah but if you think of it a wolf could have started as a stormtrooper don't think of that did you I'm going to get a drink <laughs> I just love how Daniel is ranting and raving all that time I defeated him with one sentence <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, I personally think that, you know, but Disney can pull it off, I reckon, they can, you know, mm. because obviously J.J. Adams, J.J. Adams, is it? Adams, <laughs> who's the... Adams. <laughs> 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 oh, that's a good one. Yes, oh my god. I think we should let Andy Yes, yes. With his, his, you know, boo Star Trek for a minute. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, he's done a, a very good job with that. You know what I mean? He's, he's done a good job. Just so I'm hoping he'll do the same with Star Wars. You know what I mean? Yeah, because uh, I'm sure JJ Adams will do a perfect job. <laughs> Remember remember <laughs> to take cell tape up to Burnley and just while we do the interviews put it round his mouth so he doesn't say anything. Yeah, that's why we're gonna have to do that. Well then it's easier for well, you know what, it's easier for you know what they what find us. Just look for the guy with cell tape round his mouth. <laughs> you know what they say, you <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's no need to. <laughs> okay, he's I'm done. got the squeaky voice now. He's got the cellar tape on his mouth. It's like, well, it's a How? That even hurt my. Anyway, like, yeah, anyway, screams. Yeah, anyway, now, we've got <laughs> Dan, what do you think on this? I, well, um, I think if again, if, if it's depending for me on the. The storyline and like, well, the the effects obviously is kind of important, but 
it's more in the storyline. If it's a good storyline and it's good with the audience and I like it, then I'll happily watch a Star Wars movie a year or something. But if it's bad, the first one bad, the second one bad, and it doesn't look any better, then I would kind of disagree and not watch them. Now, I've seen people that have said, oh, I don't care if the story's bad or whatever's bad. I'm going to watch it just because it's Star Wars. I mean, fair enough, but it's kind of... if it's So, the... those are basically the same people who refuse to watch the holiday special basically. of Star Wars. Yeah, but the, the holiday... The ho- don't even get me started with the holiday special. <laughs> but as there is on the title, isn't that what they're saying? Uh, please don't get me started. I wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, don't. <laughs> so, Daniel, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Yeah. As for me, yeah, Steve Beck of my thoughts ish. Well, in the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it will start up well, you know, with Disney's movies. I do think they'll make a good start. It's just really depending on how they can keep it up, you know. Yeah. Eventually, you know. I mean, eventually everything gets repetitive if they keep it going too long. And like, yeah, of course, Star Wars is a big universe. We don't know how long it will be until it gets repetitive, but it could happen. You know, personally, I'm more excited for this rumored Obi Wan Kenobi character film than the sequel trilogy. Because it's Obi Wan Kenobi, he's a boss. And it'd be great if they added elements of the youth into it. Because really, if you think about it, you know, the Obi-Wan spin-off film sounds like it could be the only thing, you know, not related to the original trilogy end. You know, we all love the original trilogy, but you need to keep a focus on, you know, the other aspects of yeah. Star Wars at the same time. Uh, yeah. You know, basically anything between episode 3 and 4 with Obi-Wan Kenobi would be really cool, you know. You know, his outcast on Tatooine, you know, that would be pretty cool, you know, after, you know, the yeah. Um, and the Han Solo film that's rumored that will obviously be uh, after Return of the Jedi I'd say maybe in between yeah. the original trilogy and any of the original trilogy films but it's definitely not going to be uh, more near the prequel trilogy um, the Boba Fett film there is that chance you know, they think because you know I actually do have it from sources you know the Bounty Hunters I was going to um that was supposed to be paid a bonus content for the Clone Wars, but might be cancelled. You know, it's gonna be an epic act that ties up a lot. You know, if they made a movie out of that, yeah, you know, that would be really cool. You know? A bit like what they did with the Mall Arc when they put it all together and tried to. You know, I'm pointing an actual movie, you know, not several episodes matched together and say, hey, look, here's a movie. <laughs> well, that didn't really work, but um. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was a great viewing experience for those who saw it. Definitely. Yeah, it would be really cool, you know, if the Obi Wan and Boba films were between episode three and four. I think the Obi Wan film there's that chance the Boba film. I'm not so sure. I mean, if it if it is set after the events of the of Jedi, they better show Danga helping Boba Fett, or this fanboy will be eternally ticked off again. You know what to do, Disney, or you'll have an angry fanboy knocking on your princess doors. Yeah, sure, why Dango is better than Boba. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we have to have a Gascon movie. I kid, I kid. No, I'd actually watch that now. <laughs> Ga- just name it, as we said before, Gascon Adventures. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, come on, who won't watch a movie of that? <laughs> well, watching a tiny guy running around, I had enough with that arc already. But it was a good arc. D- don't you remember one of the episodes I just gave up on? <laughs> you give up on everything. That's, That's not true. I, 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 ch- 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 shush. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on to the next topic, if you like it or not. No, I'm not really too bothered. Um, I think I've shipped my so our next our next topic is Celebration Europe 2 news guest announcements I'll let Rari say it epic win 
I'll find it. I'll, I'll, I'll read your part of the show, and no, I'm kidding. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there are three great new autograph guests announced for the celebration of two, who are Amy Allen, who played Ayla Sakura in a technical to Avengers Sif. Very excited to meet her. Um, I was hoping she'd get announced for the celebration, but I actually thought she won because she wasn't at the first um, celebration yet. But from the think of it, uh, since the first attack, the, the one to celebrate Technic Clone, celebration two. Um, 11 years ago, I think she's attended FB1, including Celebration Japan, minus the first Celebration Europe. So it's not really that much of a surprise. And there's Kenny Baker, Air 2 d 2 um, I might meet him, I might not, depending on who else they get, because, yeah. you know, I've, heard, I've seen um, that he charges more at Celebration, so there's autograph, you know, a lot more than the fan shows, so I'll probably just wait yeah. to meet him. Show, then Maybe Fury turns to Fan Fante someday. Yeah, I mean, he's a tender three of the six Fan Yeah, so. It's like he'll try and get him back again. Um, and then there's Paul Blake Rito. Might meet him again, um, depending on the other guests. You know, he is pretty cool, very nice. Uh, yeah. I don't really care for Greedo, but in terms of autographs, I'm just trying to get whatever I can get, really. Um, and build up that slowly, you know, building collection, and, you know, I did see both Paul and Kenny at my first convention in the Actors Q&A, um, of course, didn't get the autographs, so no, there'd be any actors signing autographs at that event, so it was a big shock, um, you know, I definitely need to get all the autographs from the guests I saw at my first convention down the line, and Jeremy and Julian will start that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, those, those three great guest sentiments definitely going to get a new sort of graph. Um, really depends on the other two. I'll probably give Kenny a miss, definitely, if his price is higher than the fan shows. Um, yeah. And I understand if it's a bit, you know, the records, you know, usually charges £15 at a fan show. You know, salvation minimum really is $20. But you know, Kenny went up to forty dollars just for Celebration Six, so that's how you. I don't know how it. much. Sorry, go ahead. I don't know how much Kenny charges on uh, other conventions, but when I met him last year at the Fan Fun Day uh, and I got his autograph, um, it cost me ten pounds. Yeah, um, I was actually thinking that because you know that most of them probably charge less uh, for fans' own items at the fan show, so. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure how it works. <laughs> yeah, if you, uh, I'm probably gonna. Yes, if you bought a signed picture he provided, it wouldn't cost you 15 so... Mm. Yeah. But seeing as it's your night, and he charged less, which is great that most guests do it that way. That means I save £5 when I get Alan Dusko's autograph, he charges less than a fan's own item. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. At least all take to find figures are still easy to find. Was, <laughs> was, it, was it just me, or did I read... Um... Or possibly you posted it, or somebody posted it, that they might be announcing more guests on May the 4th. Yeah, they will. And, and like, the autograph program as well. Which yes. Is like, which That's... I think they'll announce the autograph prices for those guests they'll announce, and the ones they've re announced, which I can't wait to see. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably get sick when I look at Ian Abercrombie, uh, Crombie's McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> or, why did I Ian McDermott's actually was said that was probably getting an uh, autograph price. Um, no, that'll be high. Um, Definitely. Considering considering how similar uh, dollars and euros are um, when you do currency exchange, I do hope that they'll you know uh, have pretty much the same prices as they did at you know the American celebrations, like the lowest guess, you know, only charging. Dollars, or in this case, twenty euros per autograph. You know, that's what I'm hoping for. It might be a bit dearer. Yeah. Euros, but hopefully it'll be the same. Because you know, if yeah. you convert American and US and euros, you know, pretty much the same price, really. Yeah, definitely. And then, of course, the thing everyone wanted to see in their their celebration, the tattoo test, testable festival. Testable. <laughs> 
I can't get any words like today. Wakey wakey. To do yeah. yeah, to best of all, um, you know, I'm personally not a fan of tattoos. I won't be getting a tattoo, but you know, I did see um a podcasting person who I'm gonna main name this got a wolf pack tattoo at Celebration Six last year. Just pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I'm a dedicated Wolfpack fan, but I'm definitely not getting that tattoo. Get 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 a wolf uh, tattoo on my chest. <laughs> you like wax, sir? Oh no, I'll get a ne- uh, the Neo logo one. Well, yeah, I get Cody. Get Cody, I would no, get Cody. I'd I'd burn my chest first. <laughs> and Steve, who's your <laughs> clone then? Sorry, what was that? Right? Who's your favorite who's clone, your favorite? Steve? Um, just like watch his words here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all right. I just I just turned around momentarily then just to check out the clone shelf that I used to have behind me, and then I remembered that it wasn't there anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I'm pro- I'm. It's a bit cliche if I say wolf or Rex. Uh, I so don't, don't know. Say Rex. You know it's good for you not to say Rex. <laughs> well, it probably would have been Rex if we knew what bloody happened to him, but we're never going to find out now, thanks to the uh, cancellation of the Clone Wars. So, oh well. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not too sure, to be honest. What, by the way, it won't be too cliche if you say Wolf, he's not a major clone like Rex and Cody, so you can say it. You should, you should just like, well, I'm just going to say Apple. <laughs> 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 oh. I think that's our Celebration Europe 2 topic finished then. And that means the end of the show? No! no. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying, but I can't wait to meet Amy Allen. And I'll get oh, yeah. to video and to <laughs> And you can only watch you, it. So. You, you and Graham will be taking over the Celebration Europe 2 part. Yeah, by the way, that's another thing. Are you going to give us business cards to bring there? Hmm, actually, that's a good point. When is it? Actually, we'll discuss this after. <laughs> Again? Yes, I, I've got a notepad here of everything we have to discuss after. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so I think that's all our topics covered tonight. And I think it's time to wrap this show down. Um, so... Yeah, I know that down I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get some sellotape and start wrapping the show up um so make sure to check out our YouTube channels the podcast is www.youtube.com slash user slash voice of the republic one mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash 14 mr das Ravi's is www.youtube.com slash user slash separatist destroyers Andrews is www.youtube.com slash game reviews 94 and also check out Steve's YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash user Sith Lord 229 and don't forget to check out our Clone Wars our friends at Clone Wars Weekly podcast just simply type in Clone Wars Weekly in the search bar and as I say every week you're guaranteed to find it um, and also check out channel 113 on Facebook which is where we stream from live every week now um, so yeah just type in channel 1138 on Facebook and if you're a new podcast and you want to go live then simply find out info there um, but yeah so uh, that's the end of this show and it's been a very interesting one especially um, but 